Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be discussing the smallest exoplanet we've discovered so far, known as Kepler-37b. We're going to take a look at its surface in Space Engine and we're going to discuss the scientific elements using Universe Inbox. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And so here we are on Earth, we're going to be going on a bit of an adventure and it's going to be at a distance of about 215 light years away from us. It's in the direction of the um, constellation of Lyra and uh, we're going to a system of Kepler-37 that has at least four exoplanets we've actually discovered so far. Now, this system was discovered quite a long time ago, um, well, I mean, in relative terms at least. This was back in 2013. But uh, the interesting thing about it is that we've actually found what seems to be the smallest exoplanet we've seen so far, a planet known as Kepler-37b. This planet orbits very close to its parent star, and this planet even seems to be only slightly larger than our own moon. In other words, it's barely uh, larger than the moon of planet Earth. So we're actually going to go take a look at uh, this particular object. And because it's so close to its parent star, it's going to be a little bit hot there. Now we're also going to then take a look at it in Universe Sandbox because I want you to see how it behaves in relation to its parent star and what is actually happening on its surface. So we actually discovered this planet by looking directly at Kepler-37 and when we were looking at it, with time we actually observed the passage of the planet right in front of it. You kind of just saw it happen right a few seconds ago. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just so you can see it again. And so these passages, these direct observations were very easy for us to detect because um, Kepler-37 is actually not a very bright star. It is a yellow dwarf similar to our sun, but it's actually a little bit less massive. And so it's a little bit less energetic and produces a little bit less light. And it's also more stable than other stars, around it at least. And so we, we know how much luminosity to expect from it. And so when we saw luminosity drop from a passing star that you see in front of it, we were able to calculate all four of these objects, all four of these planets. But we don't really know exactly what their mass is, we just know their sizes. And because we don't really know their mass, we're not really sure what the density is. But we are absolutely certain that the closest planet here, Kepler-37b, um, which is, I believe, this planet right here, is um, about the size of our moon. It's maybe just a little bit larger than our moon but we don't really know what it's made out of. We think it's a terrestrial world. We actually th are almost certain that it's a terrestrial planet, probably similar to Mercury, but it orbits about four times as close to its star as Mercury, and as a result, is pretty hot here. It's a very, very hot world. So I'm going to accelerate time just to show you what most of its surface looks like. But this right here is the smallest, in size at least, object we've discovered so far. Now, in tomorrow's video, we're actually going to discuss the smallest uh, planet we've discovered by mass, and it's going to be a very different object, so do come back tomorrow to learn about it, but this right here is the smallest uh, by size. Now, as you can see here, the temperature is at least 340 degrees Celsius, so this is not water. As a matter of fact, this is probably just some scorched earth scourged, burned uh, molecules that are creating this, this unusual water-like effect. But we're going to go on the surface and just, just to kind of check it out a little bit more. Now, a single year on this planet only takes about 13 days, and because it's so close to its parent star, this is why the surface here is essentially a horrible, scorching environment but we think that it probably doesn't even have atmosphere we think that the star that it's orbiting is basically causing so much heat here that it probably burned away all of the atmosphere similar to what uh, mercury kind of has in this uh, simulation it does seem to have a little bit of atmosphere not a lot but maybe about six percent of what there is on earth 
kind of uh, a little bit more, uh, I guess, a little bit more atmospheric than Mars in some sense. But this is all speculative. We don't really exactly know what's happening here. And we haven't really studied its atmosphere just yet to find out uh, more about it. But th there will be a chance for us to study the atmospheric composition when the James Webb telescope launches in 2018. Because we can actually look at the atmosphere um, by looking at the passage of this planet in front of the star. And when that happens, we'll be able to see what kind of molecules it actually has in its atmosphere. Now, in this star system, none of the planets are actually habitable. As a matter of fact, I believe all four of them are pretty hot. So this is the second planet. Here is the third planet. Um, also very hot, even hotter than the second planet, actually. And the last planet, known as Kepler 37e, is also just as hot. So all four of them are a little bit scorchy, if that's the word I can use. For, for the description of the situation that's happening here. Scorchy it is. Uh, so all of them are basically very hot, desertic um, super worlds. But the planet that we are interested in, the Kepler 37b, is technically known as a uh, micro-Earth or sub-Earth. Basically, it's a, it's, it is a planet, but it's a planet a lot less massive and a lot smaller than our own planet Earth. Now, let's actually create this uh, star system right here in Universe Setbox and take a look at some of the uh, actual mathematical parameters of these planets. So this is what the system looks like. If I were to enable the habitable zone, you would see that it's actually much farther away. And we don't really know if there are planets here. It's possible that there are planets in that region, but we haven't seen them. So we don't know if they exist. We've only seen the four planets that are really close to the star. And if you look closely, you'll see that all four of these planets are actually uh, releasing tremendous amounts of gas from their surface. So when you create the, the simulation, they do seem to have a bit of atmosphere, but they start losing it almost right away. And that's because basically um, they're so close to the parent star. Now, the temperature here is, for some unknown reason, reads at minus 106 degrees Celsius. Although the effective temperature is 309 degrees. And that's basically a small bug in the game that I don't really know how to fix. But if we try to add a little bit of atmosphere here, watch what happens. So as soon as you put a little bit of atmosphere, it actually starts evaporating almost instantly. And this kind of gives you an idea that um, this object, the smallest planet we've discovered so far, probably doesn't really have atmosphere on the surface. Unless it has a tremendously strong magnetic field, but that would only be possible if this object was spinning super, super, super fast. Uh, and it had a metallic core that was pretty large, which we don't think it actually has. It's just a little bit too small for any of these things to, to occur, unless it's like super lucky by some chance. All right, so this is kind of how close this planet is to its parent star. And you can see that the other planets are not actually that far off from it. And as a matter of fact, these uh, planets form a kind of a resonance. In other words, for every single orbit, in other words, there is actually a pattern to their orbits. So from what I understand or from what I remember, the outer two planets have a resonance of eight to five. So for every eight orbits of this planet, this one orbits five times. And then, um, this planet also has a 3 to 1 resonance um, with the outer two planets as well, or I believe with this one here. So for every three orbits of Kepler 37b, 37e orbits three times. And so because of this resonance, they actually create a very stable um, orbital parameters, which will probably be stable for a very long time, for billions and billions of years until something comes in and disrupts them. But let's actually maybe just go here for a few more seconds and compare this object both to our own moon and also to our own planet Earth. So in comparison to our moon, this is how much bigger it is by about 7% or so. It's also probably a little bit more massive, but that's just a speculation because we think that maybe it's a little bit more dense than the moon, uh, but we don't really know that. And in comparison to Earth, this is what Earth looks like. So in other words, if this planet was in the same orbit as Earth, it would actually technically be considered to be the moon of Earth. So it's not really big at all. 
And as you can imagine, it's way smaller than Mars, and it's also way smaller than Mercury as well. So uh, this is kind of interesting because this allows us to really try to understand how um, all of these star systems have formed and especially how our own star system formed because this system seems to have four terrestrial worlds in the region where Mercury would be um, orbiting around our own sun. So these four planets kind of represent uh, the formation of a solar system or a star system that is similar to our sun but has undergone some other very different events that caused it to have these unusual objects there and let's actually see what would actually happen if we placed earth right here in the orbit around this tiny planet they're going to be orbiting around one another and possibly collide with something so we're going to run the simulation and let's discover what happens. Oh, and look at that. It actually starts destroying Earth almost right away. Well, anyway, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. And I kind of wanted to introduce this tiny exoplanet to you because you probably have never heard of it. It's not really that significant. And except for being the smallest we've discovered so far, it probably isn't the smallest out there. We just haven't seen anything smaller than it just yet. Maybe one day we'll discover something that is even smaller than this. For now, that's the tiniest we have. Tomorrow, you're going to learn about another really unusual small exoplanet, but that, this time it holds a different type of a record. And also, what I wanted to do before I finish this video is thank all of you wonderful people for all of your support, and specifically people on Patreon that have been supporting this channel for several months now. And, okay, it seems like Kepler-37 just swallowed our planets. On that note, do check out the official sponsor of this channel, Brilliant.org, that actually has this really, really cool course in astronomy that talks about worlds beyond Earth. And specifically, it actually talks about exoplanets and various um, exoplanets that we've discovered using a variety of techniques, including, of course, the technique that I briefly mentioned in this video. You can actually go through these problems yourself and you can kind of learn about how we use uh, various mathematical uh, solutions and how we actually uh, find these planets using a variety of tools uh, such as telescopes that can actually measure direct transits which allow us to see the um, planets as they pass in front of their parent stars so kind of like this and what's really cool about Brilliant is that they actually do this by giving you these problems to solve. And if you find them too difficult, you can always just look at the solution and go to the next problem. So it's not just reading about things, but it's doing it actively. And that's how you learn. Anyway, thank you so much, Brilliant, for being the official sponsor of this channel. And thank you so much, you wonderful person, for coming here and watching this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Let's get out of the Kepler-37 system and find out what other system we can visit tomorrow that is going to probably blow your mind. See you later. Bye-bye.